Home to tossing grenade the windmills. Windmills, 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 windmills. Hi, my name is Matt Franklin. All right, on to the podcast. This is the novel Grenade Man vs. the Zombies by T.C. Ricks. Chapter 4 Jarvie had never expected to return to the place between worlds ever again. Once was enough, but his determination overcame his better judgment. Long, thick tendrils of smoke moved in webs down and above him. Clouds formed horrific patterns of skulls, tentacles, snakes, spiders, and fangs in all directions. Vermilion lightning flashed in the distance every few seconds. Chaos stepped from behind an atom and looked at Jarvie with complete disdain. "'Well done, my boy. You succeeded beyond my wildest expectations.' The approval in his voice did not match the expression— Jarvie swallowed and had to force words to come from his throat. Th "'Thank you, sir. I am pleased to have been able to use the power you so graciously gave,' Chaos coughed, "'loaned to me to achieve my desired ends. Such a price was more than worth a portion of my soul.' Jarvie desperately wanted to ask him just how much of his soul that might be, and what was he going to do with it. It hadn't mattered so much when he bartered it away— but now that he knew magic was real, the prospect of an afterlife suddenly meant something more to him. If he hadn't already made the bet, he would be just as likely to ask for eternal life as the power to make real zombies. "'Glad to hear it, Jarvie. Glad to hear it. Now, what brings you back to my humble abode?' Chaos had murder in his eyes and pounded his fists together with complete rage. "'I... I need another power.' Chaos's fingernails dug deep into the flesh of his right arm, making it ooze blood, which shifted colors chameleon-style as it slowly dripped to the ground. He moved his fingers across Jarvie's neck, indicating that he might want to cut Jarvie's throat. Oh, was there something wrong with the ones I gave? Oh, was there something wrong with the one I gave you the first time? Oh, no, of course not. I'm merely saying that I have a new bet that needs to be resolved. Chaos smiled and looked closer. Why should I care? Jarvie was a bit surprised. He hadn't asked that question before. He thought a few moments and then said, I'm willing to pay you. Chaos laughed, his visible exterior becoming amiable and jovial while his voice was absolute ice. What makes you think you have anything I want? Jarvie said, You seemed to want... There is nothing that you have that I cannot take from you simply because I want to. Nothing. Not even the part of your soul I took last time. Jarvie was terrified. He had assumed that there was some kind of rule system involved. Clearly... He hadn't properly researched the situation. I don't know what you want me to say. Both the voice and the body were quite amiable as Chaos explained. Well, you don't have to say anything at all, Jarvie. Feel free to go right on back the way you came. The transport spell will put you back where you came from. I believe that was Doc's farm, if I recall correctly. You probably don't want to make too much noise, though. The anima power only works at night. Jarvie panicked. This was not going at all how he had expected. Wait! Chaos smiled jovially. Yes? Jarvie thought. If Chaos could just take anything he wanted, what could Jarvie give him? Chaos snapped his fingers, causing the theme song from Jeopardy to fill the air. He sat on an invisible throne and watched Jarvie drumming his fingers. After the tenth repeat of the tune, Chaos sighed. You're not very bright, are you? Jarvie didn't know how he should answer that question. I'm not sure what you mean, my lord. Chaos perked up a moment, interested. What did you say? I'm not... After that. Jarvie thought a moment. Uh, my lord? Yes. Chaos watched him from the throne, waiting. 
Finally, Jarvie got it. Well, I could offer you my service, my lord. Done and done. Consider yourself my representative on your world. You shall be my champion against order. Your bet is my bet. You exist to fulfill my will, not the other way around. Now, as my champion, you can ask for a boon to help you in this task beyond the anima power. But choose carefully, for I'm only giving you one. Jarvie took a deep breath. He hadn't expected things to go this far. There were rules, it turned out, but Chaos seemed to enjoy playing the game without letting him know what those rules were. The real problem was that Chaos just didn't seem to grasp the human concept of magic at all. When Jarv had explained that he wanted to make zombies the first time, Jarvie had received the anima power, but that was just an advanced form of telekinesis, kind of. It let him animate inanimate objects by infusing his will into them, but the zombies he made weren't really zombies at all. They were just dead bodies infused with power. But then again, what were zombies, really? Jarvie tried to consider what might be a more concrete example and couldn't think of one. There were as many types of zombies as there were vampires. There were dead ones, and then mostly dead ones, and then alien ones. Wait. He was going about this all wrong. Jarvie asked, How much leeway am I given in selecting a boon? Chaos frowned while he answered gleefully, Oh, a great deal. From his throne, he gripped Jarvie's throat with his skeletal hand as he lifted him up off the floor, while sitting calmly, doing nothing at the same time. Space bent and twisted around him. Jarvie found he was still able to breathe clearly, but Chaos's touch made his skin crawl. So, this boon can do many things if I ask for the right boon, Jarvie asked. Lots of ideas were flowing through his mind now. Oh, yes, so long as it allows you to fulfill your end of the challenge, it must allow you to truly and honestly create a zombie apocalypse. Well, 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 that was interesting. So, one boon was probably either a power or an item of some kind that would let him do many things. He could ask for something like a staff of wish-granting, but the... But the Prototonomicon was too close to leprechauns and fairy magic for him to risk tinkering with anything about wishes. He'd seen the movie, and it didn't end well. He needed to be able to make monsters that could reproduce themselves. Even better, if he could make a lot of different kinds of zombies, all of Doc and the others' preparations wouldn't mean much. They'd be ready for slow-moving and stupid. He could do that, but if he was right, he could do a whole hell of a lot more. Jarvie thought for a few moments and then said, I want seven stones that will let me create a spirit of death that can possess and animate a corpse. This spirit will be totally under my command and can create more spirits when I command it. Each stone will be mixable with some other quality, yet to be determined by me, that I can then infuse into the death spirit. Chaos clapped his hands and sounded doubtful. What you ask is complicated. Jarvie sighed. Perhaps he could make do with normal zombies after all. Chaos jumped up and down for glee while he said in an annoyed voice, That does not mean that I cannot grant it. I merely said it was complicated. There, it is done. Apparently one of the advantages of being a lowly mortal so far beneath one's lord and master is that you really couldn't tell the difference between the effort it took to give him the power to animate things and the power to make zombie spirits, even when it was complicated. Jarvie bowed. Thank you, master, for this mighty boon. I will work hard to fulfill your desires. Chaos laughed. I don't think you understand the way this whole evil master minion thing works, do you? Jarvie was rather surprised that Chaos had admitted to being evil. In their first encounter, he had simply said he was amoral, beyond good and evil. Oh, I am, replied Chaos to his thoughts. But this time, I'm pretty evil by your standards. The mind and culture of the world is just as much a part of the match as anything else. You people have petty archetypes. We fill them. We bend them to our will. 
Jarvie suddenly decided that he didn't really want to know any more about what was going on. Normally, he was a grim believer in the knowledge is power school of thought, but in this case his gut told him that this was a bad idea. Not really, Chaos said. That's just me getting annoyed with your whiny nature. You are intuitively responding to my needs. Part of the whole owning part of your soul thing. Succeed or perish, it's all the same to me now, minion. But if you fail, you will die. If you succeed, you will rule your pathetic little world. This has been the Tossing Grenades at Windmills podcast. I'm Thomas Ricks. Music by Melanie Ricks. Voices by Skip Huffman and Josie Bergen Lawson. Copyright 2012, Red Anvil Amalgamated. To fight the forces of evil!